Richard Fine was in prison for pointing out that supplemental pay to judges from counties is actually a bribe. In his contempt hearing, Judge Yaffe took the stand and testified in Richard Fine's contempt hearing. For a judge to allow himself to be called as a witness in a contempt trial and then rule on objections pertaining to his own testimony was beyond the pale of imagination. Welcome to PA Voter Information Network. This is Larry DiMarco, your host. Do you watch my YouTube channel but haven't subscribed yet? Why not now? It's easy and free. Just click the red button and the bell right beside it and you will be notified of all new content. This is part four of a five-part series. In part one, we learned that Richard Fine saved taxpayers over a billion dollars by fighting government corruption. In part two, he stumbled across a judicial bribery scandal of epic proportions involving county commissioners, private developers, and the taking of taxpayer money. In part three, Richard Fine discusses his imprisonment for contempt for fighting corruption. In this episode, he discusses his fight for his release, his eventual release, and then the legislative, the legislative reaction to the judicial bribery scandal to disbar Mr. Fine and legalize the judicial bribes. Now, I'm going to fast forward the story to you. It goes through the, uh, goes through the U.S. District Court. And I say that the judge is embroiled, and I show all of these statements and everything. They say, screw you, fine. I go up into the Ninth Circuit. The Ninth Circuit says that the payments really aren't, aren't illegal. Which, by the way, there's Supreme Court cases that hold that they are. It doesn't bother the Ninth Circuit. They make a decision only for me. You know, <laughs> unique. <laughs> it's the Richard I. Fine decision. Go up to the United States Supreme Court, they could care less. In the meantime, what happens is Yaffe comes out and admits that his March 18th order that he claims to have made, saying I couldn't challenge him, he really didn't make. So now I go in and I say, look, you know, the guy has admitted that he made a false order. In the meantime, they, they never even produced any documents or anything. And the, uh, the U.S. District Court says, well, you're really relitigating the writ of habeas corpus. I said, so what? So then they said, well, by the time they finally made their decision, they said, well, you're out. You're, I got out. Because what happened is that once Yaffe did this, you know, I really pounced on it. Yaffe decides to resign. And so he resigns. Mr. Fine explained that he got released on the Jewish high holiday after his rabbi pleaded with Judge Yaffe for his release. Now let's skip ahead in the story. In December, in, in 2011, the state bar came out with a statement saying that the disbarment was a fraud, interestingly enough. I then moved in the California Supreme Court to void out the disbarment. The Calif state bar did not oppose that motion. And the California Supreme Court denied it. Four out of the seven members of the California Supreme Court have taken the illegal payments while they were Superior Court judges, and the fifth wrote SBX 211, which I'll talk about in a minute, that gives them all retroactive immunity from criminal prosecution. Now, there's a rule. It's 8.54C of the California Rules of Court that says when a motion is unopposed, it may be deemed that the other has consented to have it granted. That shows you how really crooked these people are. That gives you that particular part of the idea. Now, let's talk about these particular payments. What happened is that the payments were held to be illegal and unconstitutional in a case called Sturgeon versus the County of Los Angeles, where it said that the payments violate Article 6, Section 19 of the California Constitution. Right after that happened, the judges, through the California Judicial Council and the California Judges Association, went to the legislature and they got a bill passed called SBX 211. The bill said that 
the pay, that the payments that the judges were receiving starting from July 2008 could be made. And the bill also said in Section 5 that any payments that, that the judges were given retroactive immunity from criminal prosecution, civil liability, and disciplinary action for all the payments that they got that which were illegal beforehand. And the people that gave them the payments got the retroactive immunity. So now you have the legislature going in and saying that the payments were illegal and criminal because they're giving them the retroactive immunity from the criminal payments. Now that's from the state. Now what about these payments with respect to somebody who's appearing in front of a judge paying them off? Canon 4D1 of the Code of Judicial Ethics says that a judge cannot accept a payment from anyone who's appearing in front of them or likely to appear in front of them. United States law says 18 U.S.C. 1346, the intangible right to honest services, says a judge cannot take a payment from somebody. It's a bribe. Now you have cases called U.S. versus Adams, U.S. versus Malkus, U.S. versus Frago, where good old Judge Adams took payments from a lawyer and a car dealer who was appearing in front of him. And those cases hold that under the California bribery statute, these cases, this was a bribe, and he was guilty of the intangible right, of violating the intangible right for honest services. So our judges who are taking these payments are violating the federal law. Now, Article 6, Clause 2 of the United States Constitution says that the state judges must follow federal law. So you have your state judges who are taking these payments irrespective of what the state might be feeling and everything else are violating the federal law right now. Now, a second case came up, which was called Sturgeon II, in which they challenged SBX 211. And the court came down and said, no, the payments are still illegal under Article 6, Section 19, but the temporary payments... These payments are a temporary solution until the legislature figures out a new solution. Now, that was 2010. Well, at 2013, the legislature has done nothing. This gives you an idea of how corrupt things are. Now, 30 of the 58 counties in California make illegal payments to the judges. And, that, and according to the report that came out in 2009 from the Judicial Council, that represents 90% of the Superior Court judges in California. 90% of the judges in California accept illegal money, and the law is clear. Federal law explicitly states that the acceptance of money is a bribe, and federal law applies. The state lawmakers stepped in to prevent 90% of the judges from going to prison. So it passed a law admitting that the judges took the illegal bribes and it granted all the judges immunity from criminal prosecution for their crimes and immunity for all the lawmakers who bribed them. That, my viewers, is corruption. This has been part four of a five-part series. Stay tuned for part five when Richard will discuss solutions to corruption in a county or state. If you like this episode, please click the like button, forward this episode to all the people on your contact list and social media friends, and please comment at the space below. I would love to have your feedback. Signing off, tune in next time. Bye for now.